Welcome to the 700 Club Canada. We're so glad you joined us today. Yeah, it's great to have you. You know, we've got another powerful program lined up for you today, focusing on some amazing kids as well as some powerful insight on fatherhood from one of the biggest stars in the NFL. Yeah, Kirk Cousins shares how fatherhood has changed him and his approach on the field as well as what he's learned from meeting so many fatherless teammates throughout his career. Mm-hmm. And we'll travel to Quebec to see how the Bible-based Superbook series has changed the life of one nine-year-old boy there. Brian, what do you feel is the role of fathers? You know, the father is the visible demonstration of who our Heavenly Father is. Mm -hmm. So he's a, a very important figure. We, we find uh, that we receive a lot of our validation of, of who we are and what we are, again, tasked to do because he literally gives us the the driving force that says i believe in you yeah. and so uh fatherlessness today has become a uh, a serious issue mm -hmm. but fathers now have to be uh, brought back into uh, sharp focus yeah. it's a very important role i mean even as you know once a little girl now a yes. big girl you know mm -hmm. my dad plays a very important role in my life yeah reminding me telling me who i am yes you know my value and worth yes and i'll tell you you hear that from your father and it's very important yes. isn't it so good for those who don't have a, either a father yes or have you know uh, maybe not a great father that we have a good heavenly father well and that's the beauty you know yeah. because the bible makes it very clear that we all derive our name from the god of the heavenly lights our heavenly father yeah. you know yeah. so if you didn't have a great father uh image and a role model grieve it and leave it but if you had a great one continue to uh, declare it and live it mm -hmm. you know and today we also have psychologist dr mary lynn joining us with some powerful relationship advice and skills to help you with your kids but first we have a special treat this is a look at a recent superbook event that took place in laval quebec yeah pretty cool in laval quebec 700 club canada partnered with church of the harvest for their annual back to school event Superbook is a tool the church is already using to reach children with the gospel. Several years ago, uh, we were looking for a new program to, um, for, to use for our Sunday school. We came across uh, the Superbook program. Our kids fell in love with it. Our teachers loved it. I believe it's really impacted their life. So, and it's several years now that we've been using it at our, at our church. Volunteers from the church hosted games, did face painting, and provided lots of food. Once the outdoor activities were over, everyone was invited inside. Allo, allo, tout le monde, comment ça va? Hi, everybody, how you doing? Are you happy to be here today? The children were enthusiastic to perform their dance to the song, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. Then families were invited to watch two episodes of Superbook in French. Following the show, each child was invited to take photos with Gizmo, pick up a Superbook gift bag, and a back-to-school backpack. Today, with, along with uh, Superbook, we did our back to school school bags. And uh, that too, just every year, the families look forward to it. We serve over 150 families with the bags. And uh, it's just a great also outreach at the same time, just to show the love of God to these families. And it's just uh, been a blessing to be a part of it. And uh, we're, we're just doing tangible work in the community, showing the love of God. The free Superbook Bible app has fun stuff everyone will love. It's jam-packed with games and activities, plus lots of exciting Superbook episodes that you can watch for free. Find answers to your questions, watch videos, discover biblical heroes, and of course, read the Bible. The new Superbook Bible app. All the fun of Superbook in an app. Free downloads on iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon.
Hi, I'm Aaron and I'm nine years old and I'm from Laval, Quebec. Aaron and his family were introduced to Superbook three years ago at their church, and now they use Superbook at home. It's become a favorite way to end the day. When I come from school, I just do my work, my music, or like my English French. After, I use my screen time and I come up to watch an episode of Superbook and I would go to bed. So it's a perfect time to calm them down and it's also um, a very good way for them to uh, reflect their day. We will talk a little bit about the stories that they just watched and we will pray together. Superbook has helped Aaron understand the Bible better. Superbook translate from the Bible to the language that, are, that we're speaking right now. They really love to be um, learning and watching by themselves and explore. And after that, they would like to share the story with me instead of me teaching or showing them. One of Aaron's favorite Superbook episodes is Noah and the Ark. When I was watching the episode, it was a long time ago. He didn't have like the electric saws or anything really, really fancy. And I was surprised that he built it through his lifetime. And I found out that it was like 400 years to build. And I'm like, like speechless. Because of Superbook, Aaron and his siblings are learning about God in fun ways that they can understand. So that's the top thing that I really want them to keep in their heart is to keep their faith in God. Thank you, Superbook. You know, this is truly a testament to what Proverbs says, train up a child in the way that they should go, that when they come of age, they will not depart. That's right. It takes intentionality. It really does. You know, parenting or raising kids or supporting people who are raising kids, maybe you're a caregiver or child caregiver, be intentional. Like, it doesn't just happen that kids follow God. We have to be intentional, and bringing Superbook to them brings the Bible alive to them. It's such a great resource. I love uh, what Aaron said, because he said, you know, they didn't have any chainsaws or anything else like that, so yeah, yeah. He, was, he was literally working it out in his brain, you know, and he said, it just really shocks me. Yeah. 400 years it took Noah to do this, and... Uh, you know, when you look at this animation, it's second to none, and it really brings alive the biblical story and the narrative, and it helps. Did you see the twins? I mean, they were locked in. They were so engaged on that one. I love that. They're adorable. Can we all have a, a, a pair of twins, yeah, right? exactly. But uh, what they were able to do is they were able to see in clarity what the Bible is all about. That's what Superbook does. It brings the Bible to life. You know, maybe you're thinking, boy, I'd like that resource. Well, you can have <laughs> it too. $25 a month, it's as easy as that. And actually, you don't get one Superbook, you get three. One you can keep for yourself, and two to give away. And I know that uh, I get them every month and I've got my collection going for my grandchildren and I give away to another family as well. And we also give to another ministry that supports, um, you know, people from lots of other nations around the world and they get to watch Superbook. So why don't you give us a call? 1-855-759-0700. Say, I wanna join the Superbook Club and uh, we'll be happy to send it to you. You won't regret it, and it would be such an encouragement if you'd call now. We'll be right back. Inside every child is a hero, a leader, a friend to others, someone who helps out, who does the right thing, who dreams of what they can be but they still need our help. What should I do? What should I say? How should I feel? That's where Superbook comes in. It provides moral and spiritual truths through situations children can relate to, teaching God's word to the children you love. Join the Superbook DVD Club and receive Superbook's newest episodes as they're available, plus two copies to share with others, all for your gift of only $25. Get Superbook today and watch the miracles happen.
Minnesota Viking Kirk Cousins is one of the NFL's highly prized and highly priced quarterbacks. While pressed in a career of leading and audibleizing, his inspiration quickly throws to fathering, once as a son and now as a dad. His wife Julie and boys Cooper and Turner reflect a bigger perspective for Kirk to navigate through both game and life's ups and downs. My Heavenly Father will allow painful experiences to come into my life from time to time. Much like I need to allow my own children to fail and to experience a setback and to understand that's part of life. And so I can go through a challenge, a loss, an injury, a frustration, undue criticism. I can endure that knowing that God's gonna use this. He's not wasting it and it's not for nothing. And so there's purpose and there's meaning and as a result, I take great comfort in it. What does fatherhood give you? Well, fatherhood's been a joy. It's been a challenge, and it certainly takes a lot of energy. You know, when I leave, you start a whole new chapter of work when you come home, and it really gives me a picture of what my Heavenly Father is like looking at me. You know, for the first time, I truly have a picture of maybe what it's like when I have to discipline my son or say no or take him away from something that could hurt him. It's a, it paints a cool picture. What is it about that childlikeness that you find yourself borrowing there's just those moments that you see his trust in me. He doesn't want me to leave. There's a dependence there. He reaches for me. And those moments are so special, but also then make me think, you know, does my heart yearn and trust my Heavenly Father the way my son's heart yearns for me and trusts me? And it just kind of drives you to a place of humility, a place of surrender, and a place of really gratitude. How have those kids redefined wonder for you? <laughs> When they experience things for the first time, big eyes and a big smile, and I get so much joy out of seeing them experience that. I can't wait to take them to amusement parks, or I can't wait for them to try a food that I love and show them so much joy and so many unique experiences and opportunities ahead of you. I can't wait to expose them to really all that football has brought our family. I think they're gonna have some thrills up ahead as a result of being able to be close to that. What's most urgent for you to deposit into their lives now? Well, my children are so young, they see what I'm doing and they imitate. And so it's so important for me and my wife to have good eye contact and listen and be patient and be present and not be on my phone and engage with them and be kind and loving so that they can respond when they inevitably meet another kid who may push them or shove them to maybe learn that, okay, when I upset my parents, they respond with grace and kindness and I want to do the same. What do you gratefully admire most about your dad? You know, I, I was fortunate to have a dad who was very involved, very present, very wise. Just about every experience we had through the years, my dad would bring back to our faith walk and our faith journey. And so it was pretty hard to go a day or a week uh, and, and not go through something without scripture being accompanied to it. So it would be a great thing if I, if I parented, you know, close to the way my mom and dad raised me. The most impacting instruction he gave you was was based out of Galatians 6, 7. Do not be deceived, God is not mocked. A man reaps what he sows. When you make good decisions, good things happen. When you make bad decisions, bad things happen. And it was so simple. You know, the decisions you make are gonna become the life that you live. What do you want those consequences to be? And so walking with God, obeying God, understanding what his word says and applying it to your life became so important. Does it ever play back for you out here on the field? It plays back every day because as a quarterback, the number one trait of, of a quarterback is to be a great decision maker. Mm. Uh, if you don't make good decisions with the football in your hands, none, no other quarterback trait really matters. It comes down to your decision making and obviously you can get better and better as a decision maker as you play and get reps and go through experiences and learn, but football's the same as life. You gotta be a great decision maker to have success. Those guys down there that are your friends and teammates, diverse backgrounds, sure. polar opposites, a lot of them experiencing failed fathering. Right. What do you find to be the most common denominator that everybody that is fatherless yeah. craves? Yeah. Well, this, this concept is a passion of mine because I have had so many teammates from so many different backgrounds and so many of them grew up without a dad. Someone truly leading and guiding them responsibly and with maturity. And then I look and I see some teammates who grew up in very difficult backgrounds, very tough neighborhoods, very poor schooling, and yet had a dad, a dad who was present in their life loved them, cared for them, and, and raised them. You see how they were able to overcome so many adverse circumstances that were thrown in their life. You know, I don't want the dad to feel any shame, but I don't want the son to feel that there needs to be blame. I want the, 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 the son to be able to say, a fresh start, 
forgiveness. The ground is level. And then let me maybe break that cycle with, with my children. The individual who hears Heavenly Father, there's nothing heavenly yeah. about my father. Part of the reason they struggle with becoming a Christian or believing that there is a God is because their earthly father was such a bad example that it's hard for them to understand a relationship with a Heavenly Father. Those that are wandering from fatherlessness, sure. look at them in the eye, what would you tell them? First of all, my, my heart breaks for you. There is a Heavenly Father, a perfect Heavenly Father who desires a relationship with you so much so that he sent his son to die for you. He doesn't put any shame on you or on your dad. Well, there's forgiveness, there's restoration, there's redemption, and God wants a, a fresh start, a clean slate. Find the freedom and the peace and the healing when you come into a relationship with, with your Heavenly Father. I love listening to Kirk Cousins and how God is working. And he says that God can use everything that's happening in my life for his glory and his honor. You know what? It was a great reminder and so inspiring because I think we've lost sight even of our role as parents, you know, whether dads or moms, mm -hmm. that we're to train up. Yes. discipline our kids to so they can have resilience in their life yes. and that is an example of how God treats us and it's just a really good reminder isn't it Brian well it, it really is and and you know after playing for uh, 12 years myself one of the things that I had found is that there were a lot of guys that didn't come from the same families and just like Kirk's talking about right here you know um, I believe that there are people and young men and women within your environment and in your sphere of influence that need fathering. And today, like never before, I believe that there is an, a need and also a strong, it's a strong call for people to rise up and become surrogate parents. Yeah, yeah. And that parenting could be done as simply as just saying, I want to adopt one of the, the uh, young people in my church. I want to adopt and just ask them how they're doing. I want to engage their world because a lot of times we think that we have to have these special skills, but children are resilient and children also have an incredible amount of just curiosity mm -hmm. of what could be in the possibilities. Speaking into a child is never a bad thing. Absolutely, I bet you we all remember those people in our life that spoke into our life, yes. both in good ways and in bad ways. Yes. And I agree with Brian, I think it's a call to the church today that we need to help parent. It takes a community to raise a child. So whether you have children or not, you have an opportunity to participate in the growing up, in the development of a child. And maybe there's ways, as Brian suggested, adopt a child, get involved in children's ministry, even in your church, whatever that yeah. looks like. But look for children around you, look for parents around you that you can help support today because we really all need a community to help us raise children, especially to follow God. Absolutely. You know, it's an, an important that you do that because the three most important people in a child's life is their parent, their teacher, their coach, and sometimes we can become all three of those. Well, up next, psychologist Dr. Mary Lynn will be here to offer relationship skills for your kids. Mm -hmm. Christmas is a time to celebrate the birth of Jesus. And to reflect on the joy and hope of the Christmas season. But it's also a special time for us to pray for you. And if you need renewed hope or prayer for a difficult situation, give us a call. We'll join together to pray for your needs today. 1-855-759-0700. Or you can send your prayer requests through our website, 700cub.ca, or message us on Facebook or Instagram. We'd love to hear from you today. God bless you. In my practice as a psychologist, I've started to observe a key missing skill with a number of our kids that's causing them untold heartache and a failure to thrive. And that's people skills. Parents, do your kids a favor and help them to develop the interpersonal skills necessary to handle themselves well in situations involving people, which is pretty much most situations. In fact, these skills have been shown through research and clinical experience to be one of the most important skills linked to life and relationship success. Our kids need these skills for three main objectives. Number one, to achieve their goals in a situation. Number two, to get and keep a good relationship. And number three, to keep or improve their self-respect. 
Time and time again, we see kids struggle tremendously without these skills, whether it's with peers or with their self-esteem or with their capacity to have a voice to impact what happens in a given situation. What I call their power to make things happen. These skills are critical to success in life. So the more you can teach and model these skills to your kids, the better you're equipping them for resilience. The first objective, their capacity to achieve their goals in a situation. This is related to obtaining the legitimate rights, getting another person to do something, refusing an unwanted or unreasonable request, resolving a conflict, and getting their opinion or point of view taken seriously. We need to teach our kids how to assert themselves appropriately, how to express their thoughts and their feelings, rather than just assume that everyone can read their minds and know how they feel. And if necessary, even how to express the consequences of what could happen if their request isn't addressed. There are many wonderful games and workbooks that you can pick up from your local bookstore that teach our kids how to assert themselves and communicate effectively. The key here is practice, 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 but also model for your kids how to do this well. They're watching you and absorbing what you do like a sponge. Now the second objective, Getting or keeping a good relationship is teaching our kids how to act so that the other person keeps liking and respecting them. This is about teaching them to balance their immediate needs with the good of the long-term relationship. So for example, rather than being so competitive and rubbing their win into their friend's face, teach them how to be gracious winners so that it will preserve the friendship in the long term. In our culture today, we overemphasize self-esteem to the point that we kind of end up teaching our kids to have an overinflated sense of themselves while blaming others for problems or negatives in situations. I think it's important to gently challenge our kids if we see them acting in ways that are hurtful or will cause disruption in their friendships with peers. Our kids need to know their weaknesses as well as their strengths. So in the early example, if your child tends to be competitive, let him know how his actions and words can sometimes hurt or turn off their friends. Teach your kids how to be courteous, how to use their words to express their anger rather than physical or verbal attacks. Teach them to avoid manipulative or threatening words or judging others. Show them how to express empathy. Teach them how to treat others with respect. And how do you do that? You got it, it's by modeling it. Not just by how you treat others in front of them, but actually how you treat your kids. Don't demand respect from them just because you're the parent. Treat them with respect and also put a stop to their disrespectful behavior immediately, but do it in a calm, assertive, and loving way. You do this often enough and your kids will learn courtesy and respect from your actions, which speaks much louder than your words. And finally, the third objective, keeping their self-respect, is teaching our kids how to be fair, not just to others, but to themselves how to express a different opinion from others or to say no without apologizing, how to stick to their own values regardless, and how to be truthful at all times and take ownership for themselves without making up excuses. This also means walking away or choosing not to tolerate when someone treats them with disrespect. This is about teaching them healthy boundaries. Remember, one of the fruits of the Spirit is kindness, not niceness. Being polite and kind does not mean being a doormat or allowing others to treat you with disrespect. An important skill for your kids is for them to have the confidence to speak up for themselves so that they learn not to tolerate bullying or abusive behavior from others. Kids who respect themselves will teach others how they want to be treated. Beyond the skills to navigate the challenges of the background, these interpersonal skills will hold them in good stead when they enter the workplace and other places of ministry. From Superbook. The Egyptians are searching homes again. Pharaoh said you would not take baby girls. I'm certain there's a boy child? Gotcha. Trust in God even when times are tough. He has a plan for your life. God of Jacob, we need your help. The birth of Moses. Yours for a gift of only $25. Please keep him safe. If they find him, they could kill him. The Birth of Moses, available now. Well, Lori, this has been a powerful program about fathering. Oh, yes. And I, I mean, you know how much I love kids, Brian. Yes. And I'm very passionate about 
all of us raising kids together. Yes. As you've already said. Absolutely. And we've seen it in the church, and mm -hmm. we can say this in the most loving way. <laughs> Be as consistent as you can with your kids yeah. uh, in getting them to church, in being part of a community, in reading the Bible with them. Actually, we have a great tool for you to help you with that. Yeah. It's simply called the Advent Devotional, and it'll walk you and your family. doesn't matter the age of your children. There are short readings for every day. You can even build an Advent wreath together. It shows you how to do that. Lots of ways to interact with your kids over this Advent season, preparing them for Christmas. Not, what am I going to get for Christmas, but yes. what is Christmas really about? What have we been given at Christmas? With your best gift, whatever generous gift you can give us, we would be so pleased to send this to you. Call us at one 855 700 and tell us that you want the Advent devotional. Yeah, make sure you tell us you want the Advent devotional. And these devotions, I'm telling you, for the whole family, they will prepare your heart and you'll have a sweet Christmas. It's just a little more than a month in advance right now, but you could send that gift and it would be help us yeah. as the year closes out to really do something special. Right. You know, we've got some uh, some comments that came in some yeah. from some viewers. Well, Fern wrote us and said, thank you for giving me the chance to bless my grandchildren. Now listen to this, she's 81 years old. She has eight grandchildren with four more on the wow. way. Love it. She says they take turns with the videos so they all get them. That's so great, Fern. What a great example and great way to use Superbook. Yeah. D'Angelo says, I love Superbook, and it is a nice way for children to know about God. Mm. You're absolutely right, D'Angelo. Yes. Thank you. You know, parenting is hard work, Brian. Sure it is. And there are many people single parenting mm -hmm. today. And I just feel like we need to pray for parents. Yeah. We need to pray especially for those who have the burden of single parenting mm. because God promises that he will help them parent, Amen. right? We can call on him. Why don't you do that? Father, you have promised that you are a father to the fatherless and also to widows. But we ask you that you would, Lord, where there has been a breach that you would now lord put your amazing grip of grace into that family and allow them the resources the tools the protection and the peace in that home this shalom we pray it for them in jesus name in jesus Amen. name psalm 68 says sing to the lord sing praise to his name lift him up his name is the lord yes a father to the fatherless a defender of widows is god and in his holy dwelling mm -hmm. hey stay with him he'll stay with you until next time god bless to contact us phone 1-855-759-0700 you can now like us on facebook and follow us on twitter or instagram